Today I want to talk for a little while from the topic, what if, and we're going to be looking at Acts, the 27th chapter, and I'll be reading verses 21 through 26 and 39 through 44. And it says, since they had been without food for a long time, Paul then stood up among them and said, men, you should have listened to me and not have set sail from Crete and thereby avoided this damage and loss. I urge you now to keep up your courage for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For last night, there stood by me an angel of the God whom I to whom I belong and whom I worship. And he said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before the emperor. And indeed, God has granted safety to all those who are sailing with you. So keep up your courage, for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have been told. But we will have to run aground on some island. In the morning, they did not recognize the land, but they noticed a bay with a beach on which they planned to run the ship ashore if they could. So they cast off anchors and left them in the sea. And at the same time, they loosened the ropes that tied the steering oars, then hoisted the foresail to the wind. They made for the beach. But striking a reef, they ran the ship aground. The bow struck and remained immovable but the stern was being broken up by the force of the waves. The sewer soldiers planned to kill the prisoners so that none of them might swim away and escape. But the centurion, wishing to save Paul, kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and make it for the land, and the rest to follow, some on planks and others on pieces of the ship so that it was that all were brought safely to land. You know, I had been working on a message for the past few days, but it just wouldn't come together. The more I studied it, the more I started to realize this is not it. I'm not supposed to do this. I had gotten to a point yesterday where I just felt stuck. I was afraid I wasn't gonna have anything to share with you this morning. I couldn't explain it to Shauna, I couldn't tell her exactly what I was feeling. I tried, but all I could do was stop and pray about it. She doesn't know this happened because she left the house. But I sat at the table. I actually had my head on the table and I was just about pleading with God to help me because I couldn't face this morning with nothing to say. So I decided I'd stop because a lot of times when I'm stuck, I decided to write in my journal. So I picked up my journal. And as soon as I turned to a blank page, I, I discovered something really strange. The page was just a little teeny rip on the top. But somehow in the middle of the page, along the binding, there was a big chunk taken out, taken, taken out of the paper. I don't know how that happened. I can't explain how that happened. But just along the binding, there was a big chunk of paper taken out. So I looked at the page and I said, well, there's enough of it left. I figured I could still use it. But as I started to write, that damaged page reminded me of where I hope I am in life. That I am damaged, but I'm still useful. My heart and my mind are still intact but there's still something just a little bit off in me. Like the page in my journal, something is missing from my life. I'm sure that what's missing for me is the space where the physical presence of my mother used to be. And that piece of my life is never gonna come back. I've had flashes of thoughts that I could never be happy again or productive again without her in my life. But like this page, I can still be used to create something meaningful or beautiful, or maybe even something that will be a blessing to somebody else's life. Now that may not have been the point of the text that we read for today, but often when we read something, we read through the lens of our experience. So when I read that text for today, I saw 
in that text, I saw hope, I saw restoration, and I saw possibility. That text actually comes from the book, book of Acts, which is said to have been written by the same author as the gospel according to Luke. And Luke tells about the, the gospel of Luke tells about the life of Jesus, whereas the book of Acts tells about the beginnings of the church after Jesus' death. The passage we read this morning comes from a story about when Paul was a prisoner and was being transported by boat to a different city. Probably the main points of the text included Paul's relationship with the centurion on the ship, Paul's vision that the ship would run aground but no lives would be lost, how the centurion was instrumental in not allowing the prisoners, including Paul, to be killed, but rather freed them so that they could try to survive the destruction of the ship. But I believe that any of us who have had occurrences in our lives when things fell apart, when things did not go our way, who had moments in life when things appeared to be hopeless, maybe like me, what we see in that part of the text, the part that speaks loudest to us, is after the ship had run aground and started to break apart. Maybe you, like me, grabbed on to that last part that said those who could swim had to jump overboard first and make for the land. But this is what got to me. And the rest followed, some on planks and others on pieces of the ship. How many of us know what it's like to try to make it through life on the broken pieces. We've suffered loss. We didn't have the finances or the support or the grades to go to the colleges you wanted to. You endured the pain of a breakup in your past. You lost or didn't get a job that you thought that you were a perfect fit for. The life we imagine, the life we work to build, our relationships, all of this is like the ship but sometimes ships run aground and all we're left with is pain and disappointment. I remember the words of Martin Luther King Jr. who we remember this weekend. And he said, there can be no deep disappointment where there is not deep love. In the text, in the middle of the storm, what seemed like, when it seemed like the ship was going to be destroyed, it was love that showed up in Paul's dream. It was God who showed up and said, in spite of the storm and the destruction of the ship, Paul and everybody who was with him, they were going to make it to the shore because there was still work to be done. He had to go to see the emperor. That promise from God gave them the strength and the will to hold on and to keep moving forward. I also believe it was God's answer to my prayer that enabled me to see the value in a damaged page on a journal, which enabled me to see the value and the hope that still remained in my damaged self. It was in shifting my thinking from loss to love that I was able to be there where planks and broken pieces in my life, where that's all that seemed to remain, but I was able and am able to move forward. Even when it comes to my mother, I remember her example of how to keep moving, even when things fall apart, even to be able to find ways to grow and excel and to enjoy life. You know, 18 years ago, my mother, endured the death of her husband of 49 years in June, and then the death of her mother four months later. Sure, she grieved for a while. At times, I wondered how she was going to get through those two major losses so close together. Those were two significant losses. But my mother was a, water, um, a woman of significant faith. Leaning and trusting on God, she picked herself up and, you know, she spent the rest of her life being happy, having fun, trying new things, learning to dance, doing Zumba every week, doing yoga, and even showing up here in one of her fabulous church hats. 
Martin Luther King Jr. also said, we must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. My mother knew, like Paul knew, that even in the worst of situations, we can depend on God. Paul trusted God to pull him through. He maintained that infinite hope. It didn't guarantee him a problem-free arrival at his destination because really the ship really did break apart. But he and the other prisoners were able to make it to shore even on broken pieces. Similarly, you and I have made it through some things and some of us are going through some things and we're all gonna face more losses, more pains and more disappointments in life but we can also shift our thinking to an awareness of the God who's been with us and promises to be with us as we continue on our journeys. There are things that have happened that have left voids in the, in the pages of our lives, just like that hole that was on the side of the page of my journal. There are some pains and there's disappointments that will leave a lasting impact on our lives but they don't have to cause us persistent pain. I miss my mother, you know I do, but she left me with an amazing gift. She showed me that there's still so much more to enjoy in life on the other side of pain. There's so much more in life to be grateful for. And we can learn to fill those voids, those gaps, those rips in the pages. We can fill those voids with gratitude with memories, new relationships, new ideas, new experiences. You know, this week I received a booklet from the United Church of Christ Still Speaking Writers Group. And the title of the booklet was, What If? And it includes a series of questions that start with the phrase, what if? And they're questions to fuel reflection. And the very first one caught my attention. And that one said, what if you could perceive in real time how God is making all things new? We have no idea how the occurrences of our lives, both good and bad, are mixing together to create our futures. God hasn't given most of us that gift of clairvoyance and we don't know the future. But what if we commit to make the most of every moment by focusing on gratitude and believing that God really is making all things new. It was Kristen Armstrong I read who said, when we focus on our gratitude, the tide of disappointment goes out and the tide of love rushes in. I'm glad today that even though we have and will continue to have moments when we'll be damaged like that page in my journal, there's still useful space on the pages of our lives where we can create and experience something new and something beautiful. Or we can use that space in our life to capture our gratitude, our gratitude for the blessings that surround us every day and use that to repair the broken pieces of our lives. I read somewhere that in Japan, Broken objects are often repaired with gold. The flaw is seen as a unique piece of the object's history, and that adds to its beauty. What if that's what God is up to in our lives? Thank you for listening. <laughs>